It was hysterical. I was like, I can't believe you crashed this wedding. I'm doing photography and writing for a website called glimpse.org. One of the projects I, ideas I threw out to them was the idea that in Israel you can go to weddings uninvited. Now, the idea is not to go and like crash the wedding and like try to get laid or something like right. that, but it's to go and like, have the experience. Mm -hmm. And I had crashed by the, I had crashed two weddings, not really crashed, like they were friends of friends. So you right, yeah, right. which you is know? what you can do here, which you cannot do anywhere else. In Jewish weddings, if people really want to come to a wedding and they want to sit down and they want to have the whole idea is samechas and bakala to be happy for the bride and the groom. And if people really want to come off the street and come into a wedding, you're not going to ask them to leave. Tuesdays is a lucky day to get married in Jewish law, so you're most likely to find a wedding in most places on a Tuesday. Your best bet is usually during these summer months because it's warmer, but if you're doing winter, it's, it's usually a Tuesday or Thursday. Thursday is because we don't work on Friday. The dress etiquette in Israel is so different to everywhere else in the world. That's, that's what you get when people come in jeans and t-shirts to a wedding, they like, or a shirt untucked with like a khaki pair of pants. Like that's how they come to a wedding. So in most cases, it's a nice pair of pants and a white shirt. And then you pretty much fit into a religious wedding or a non-religious wedding. So in regards to girls, it's a skirt and a shirt or a nice dress, but nothing too fancy. Uh, so you do need to bring a yarmulke and then you just look like you're part of the wedding or you look like you're one of the religious cousins from somewhere else. It makes no difference. towards the hall or you'll see them you'll hear the music or you'll see all these people dressed nicely or semi-dressed nicely walking towards the hall um, and then when you sit down for the main meal you know that's it that's the harder part because you have to find a table that isn't you know the first cousins usually the back of the room far away from the bride and groom is usually the best because uh, you know they're not going to be family members um, and that way you won't be noticed <laughs> But in the beginning, I would always sort of keep a low profile. Um, if you want, don't go early. Uh, go a little later. Go either right during the chuppah. I would not, if you are crashing a wedding, go say hello to the bride and the groom in the beginning of the wedding. I would just kind of mingle and with the food stations and just sort of keep away as much as possible from the bride and the groom. If you're really daring, yeah, go up to her and say wish her mazal, you know, wish the bride a mazal tov. the food. The food is good at weddings. You should eat and enjoy and the salads on the table and, and the pitas and the bread and, and, and enjoy and eat. Eat. Very much eat. There's lots of food and it's going to go to waste if you don't eat it. So you need to eat. And you'll go and you'll check the food out and you'll check the holiday and then you'll do the whole thing. But it's, it's still fun because you still get to, to see what it's all about. I think the funniest ones is when they, you end up with your friends or people who are crashing weddings and they end up like dancing with the bride and the groom. And it's probably the funniest thing you've ever seen in your life. But on the other hand, what does the bride and the groom care? They don't know. There's 500 people at this wedding. It could be my mother's cousin or my brother. Like, who knows? And you just dance and you say Malatov and then you leave. Oh, no, 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 no.